I want to share with you this room transformation into an office and everything I did, what I did, and why I did it. I also want to remake this cabinet into a very restored, more original look and I also want to share how easy it was. I really wanted to convert this space into a studio slash office space. The shape of this room is actually a little bit awkward due to the windows and where the closet is. I think it's about giving a different illusion to the space. This is a Craig Cross Cut Station and it is super handy to make the cuts that we need to get started. We're using three and a half inch floor baseboard moldings and you can buy these in a pack at Home Depot for under $50. We also wanted to create some really neat design elements to this room as we're actually going to go around the entire space with this idea. The nice part about the Craig Cross Cut Station is we can make all the cuts right in the room that we need. It locks everything into place, making beautiful even cuts. And because we're going around the entire room making several cuts, this made the project go very quickly. So these baseboards are very basic but I really wanted to create a design element that would actually just add a little bit more style to this board and batten kind of look. So we decided to add in another molding, which is actually an MDF case molding, and it's kind of scalloped. We thought this would be great to put around at certain points and corners of the room. This also kept the cost down significantly. So the case molding that's scalloped, what we've decided to do is go around to the corner elements of the room. So door frames, closet, windows, and we're going to add that as well as we're also going to be adding in some block moldings as well. We had to make a couple of cuts to accommodate the electrical, which we did with a jigsaw. Because we're going to be using that jigsaw, what we decided to do is actually put in a screw hole right into the corner, allowing the jigsaw itself to manually be able to get around a little bit more smoothly. Using the electrical plate is perfect to create your perfect measurements. This way you can make even cuts. Using normal nails, we're just going to use those on the back of all of the boards that we've cut. Once we've glued the back of the board, we'll go around and actually add in nails to the top, middle, and bottom. This way they won't bow. You honestly need no fancy tools in order to acquire this style. As long as you have a miter box, you can manually do your cuts. And as far as nailing, you don't need a electric nail gun like we have, you can do it just manually with your nails and a hammer. But the power tools do make things go a little bit faster. Because of the shape of this room, I've actually had difficulty trying to style it with furnishings or how I wanted to actually utilize the space. So I figured by the visual element of how we create the space. So I really felt with the board and batten and adding a little bit more visual interest with it and going all the way around the room, this was really going to elevate the space and make it feel a lot taller. I also wanted to create a really good light reflection. So I figured by creating a little bit more than half of the wall space with really light tone, as well as the visual interest, this will really help with the next steps I want to get into. I think one of the biggest things I had as a drawback with this room is where the windows are placed. They're both very small and they're kind of cornered off into one corner of the room. 
And as far as placement as a bed or where I was going to use to make this even a spare room, it never seemed to work with the furnishings I had. So I really felt that this would be perfect to make for an office and studio space. Since I've started making videos, I've always battled lighting. I'm very conscious about making sure there's lots of natural daylight. But if you buy the right light sourcing systems, you can actually create something even better than natural daylight. So that's what I decided to do with this space. I am so appreciative of all the teamwork we have. There's no nice way to say this, but I absolutely dislike how this dining area works. Since we've moved into the space, I have just placed things and I have wanted to actually redo this cabinet. I have made over this cabinet at least three times and I think it's time to take it to its natural roots. So we actually have a table saw, but again, if you have a miter box, you can make a 45 degree angle. And that's what we're doing. We're making 45 degree angles for all of those horizontal cuts as we go around the room. This way, they kind of fit kind of this tongue and groove. And when we go around to do the caulking, it will look a lot more seamless. I admit, as we got into this project, I started to have a little bit of a panic thinking if this was the right way to go with the room. I had a few different concept ideas of what I thought might really work for this small space. And I even thought about making really large picture frames around the room to elevate the space. But as I got more into it and I saw it coming together, I started to realize that once I get the paint down, I think it's really gonna work. I sometimes just have to remind myself to trust the process. I always second question sometimes what looks good in my mind. Is this really going to look good when it comes alive? When I started this cabinet project, I just dove into it. I had no expectations on how easy it was going to be or difficult. I just thought what I'll do is I'll start a small section and I'm going to see how it goes first. That dining room space is a whole makeover in itself. As much as I would like to use this in the dining space, that particular space, it just doesn't work. Everything looks really clustered in there. So I have a whole different thing I'm going to be doing later on with that. I've got layers of chalk paint plus the original wood stain. That's what was making me nervous about how long this might actually take because of the wood stain. Removing the paint, that was the easy part. It was really helpful that Ryan and I were able to work as a team to get the room actually completed. So we worked on that during the day and at night actually is when I worked on the actual cabinet. I've removed chalk paint on furniture before and it's actually really easy. It was the stain that was my concern. But as you can see in this space, it's just really narrow. So I think having this cabinet in the office is gonna be great. And I think Gabriel wants to help. So I started everything with the sanding with a 60 grit sandpaper. And it actually, I had refinished a desk last week for this makeover for the office studio space. And a lot of people I had actually asked and left comments regarding why I don't use furniture stripper. And I'll explain why in a minute. So I'm using a three and a half angled synthetic brush. And again, just in preference, I love to just paint the wall by hand. This is just a personal preference. If it's easier, definitely use a roller if that's something you prefer to do. But this is only gonna be pertained to half of the wall. 
And again, I just find it therapeutic to do it by hand. I find it also less messy. Anytime I use a roller, and maybe it's just me, but I find that it kind of spits back. But when I do it by hand, I just find that it's a real clean, easy process and I have a lot less cleanup. But again, sometimes it's just easier and people do just prefer to use a roller and there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. I'm just using leftover household paint and I'm actually using Genesis White by Benjamin Moore. And this is going to be in a flat matte finish. What I'm always really impressed by with flat matte finishes is there's no sheen to it. The light doesn't pick it up. So you don't really have to overly concern yourself about brush strokes versus if you use something of an eggshell or a sheen. I really predominantly wanted this color because I really wanted to make sure that there was really good light reflection for the studio lights that we're going to be placing into this space. And poor Hadley, he is absolutely petrified of thunderstorms. I caulked all the seams around all of the trim that we put up and I gave the room two full coats waiting for each coat to dry. Sanding this cabinet back went very quickly. I was actually really excited. All the paint literally flew off as well as the wood stain that was underneath it was not difficult to take off, not like the wood desk that I had done. So I worked on the cabinet in the evening slash nighttime and then I finished off the room during the day. So just finishing off that second coat after the first one was dry, everything came exactly how I imagined it. One thing about sanding is you will have to swap out your sanding discs quite frequently. I'm still using the 60 grit to get all of the paint and the stain off the wood. But I was pleasantly surprised again how fast everything was coming off. It literally flew off and it took a, literally a fraction of the time versus the desk that I did last week. So I just kept going with it and it kept me motivated to get the whole project completed. Because chalk paint is a water-based paint, it actually literally sits on the surface of the wood. It's not something that sits deep in the wood. So removing any type of chalk paints is actually really easy. It doesn't harm the wood. It's a great way to upcycle and restyle furniture, but if you'd want to take it off, it's really easy. Oil-based paints and latex paints is a completely different conversation. I'm using a little rotary tool called a Dremel and it comes with a whole case of different tips and heads to it. So going around with all of that little tiny detail, it really, really helps. I'm also using a one and a half inch belt sander. So I'm really grateful to have these kind of tools and I'm going to leave those in my description box below. They're not that expensive and when you really want to go around and refinish some of your old heirlooms, they're really handy to have. One key caution when it comes to sanding is to make sure that your sander is moving all the time. Try not to hold it in a certain spot or it's gonna create kind of these swirl marks on the wood once you actually get the finish off. So keeping it moving at all times is pretty important. The other thing is not to fatigue your hand out. So again, just really important to lightly hold and let the sander do the work. If there's added groove details to any furniture pieces, you can always just fold the disc sanders and you'll be able to get right in there to remove any excess paint or stain. These are some of the heads that come with the Dremel. And again, it just really helps with trying to get into that smaller detail without making gouges into the wood. Even though I only spent the evenings and Ryan did help me at the end to go around and do the meticulous detail, I have to admit I was just really impressed about how fast and easy it was to sand this entire piece down.
Natalie has decided to fully make claim that this is his room now. I think it's the attraction to the wool carpet. I would really like to be able to have a space that's very professional and a place that I feel really comfortable that I can just sit down, it's versatile, I can change out the style and background, but be able to be a lot more communicative on my videos and have a little bit more talk time throughout my DIY adventures. I had thought about doing a whitewash on this piece, but you know what? I just really loved its natural wood. And I'm really thankful just to kind of go back to its natural elements. So with the extra little help with Ryan and I was able to complete this in three nights and a couple cocktails later, I was really happy with the piece and it's in mint condition. So if you ever think that painting furniture actually is harmful to furniture, it's not. It's really just a coating on top. If anything, it's keeping its hydration. I don't know who did this, it was me or if it was Ryan, but we kind of scratched the outside glass. So a little tip, if you use a little bit of toothpaste on any scratches, and maybe it's a scratched piece that of an old secondhand find that you have found, adding that little bit of toothpaste, you really want to rub it in really well, and then just use a little bit of Windex to remove it all, and the scratch should be eliminated. It might not take out the entire scratch, but it will be a lot less noticeable. So a few ciders later, I think Ryan and I just decided we wanted to have some fun with what all these lights can do. But really what we're trying to do is create a, an environment where it's gonna actually look more like natural light. So you really have to understand the versatility of what professional lights are able to do. So we just played around and had some fun with it. Going back to the rotary tool, the Dremel, and just going around and doing a little bit more detailed sanding just to get into those little crevices. It can be a little bit of a patient tester, I'm not gonna lie, but I think for the overall end result, it's totally worth it. So I'm gonna go around with that 220, and this is just gonna be a very, very fine, fine grit sandpaper just to help smooth out the surfaces of all of what the 60 grit did. So it's just gonna be a lot softer to the touch. So I'm gonna finalize by cleaning the piece using a microfiber cloth and I'm gonna use warm water with a little tiny bit of vinegar just to get any of that sanding residual off to the wood and clean it down. Once it was completely dry, I'm gonna use the furniture cell to seal the entire wood project. My main objective with creating this studio office space and kind of really focusing on how the lights were going to work in the space was so this way I could have one-on-one -on -one interaction with my videos and have a place that I knew I never had to battle with what time of day or what time of year it was and be more personable with my videos. There's definitely still more things I would like to add to this space, but I think this was a really good foundation. And I think overall the room feels a lot more grander and a lot more relaxed. And overall, I'm really proud of how it's turned out. Thank you so much for joining me in this week's video. I have so many more fun DIYs to share with you soon. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and don't forget to hit the subscribe button. I have so many more fun DIYs, room transformations, and furniture makeovers to share with you soon. Until then, take care.